Uh, so this video is about compound interest again. This time we're going to look at something called different compounding periods. Now again, there's a guy, he's putting money in the bank, he's putting $10,000 in there. Let's put it in for a certain amount of time and a certain interest rate. So we're putting it in for five years at 8% per annum. Now you'll remember in past videos, that meant that they were getting 8% per year paid to them at the end of the year. So $10,000, you wait one year and then the bank pays you interest. But that's not always the case. So let's take a look at a different case. Compounding monthly. Now what this means is that you put $10,000 in the bank for five years at 8% per annum, but they don't pay you at the end of every year. They pay you a smaller amount of interest, but they do it every month. At the end of every month, you get a little payment into your bank account. Now you could compound weekly or fortnightly or monthly or quarterly, four times a year. You could also uh, compound every six months, twice a year. Okay, let's amend our formula slightly to deal with this new situation. So this is the formula you've learned in the past. A equals P times 1 plus R to the power of T time. Now, we're going to have to deal with this compounding monthly situation. And we do that by adding some new bits to our formula. We add n here, and we add n here. So now it says a equals p, 1 plus r divided by n, to the power of t times n. Now, what's n? n is the number of compounding periods per year. So if this is compounding monthly, then our n value is going to be the number of months in the year, 12. If it was compounding weekly, then the number of compounding periods, weekly, 52 times. If it was compounding quarterly, 4 times. If it was compounding every 6 months, 2 times. n is the number of times it compounds per year. Now, let's use our formula and put some numbers in there. a equals p, the amount of money we put in the bank, times 1 plus the interest rate as a decimal divided by n, which is the number of compounding, monthly, so there's going to be 12 compounding periods in the year, to the power of time, 5 years, times n, the number of compounding periods per year, 12. I can put that in my calculator if I'm really careful, all in one shot, and I'll get an answer. And in this case, it's $14,898.46. Okay, so this is compound interest with different compounding periods. It could be monthly, weekly, fortnightly, quarterly, semi-annually, twice a year, or even daily. Now, the N values for each of these would be right there. All right, that's compound interest, different compounding periods.